Are you thinking about moving to Rwanda, but you're wondering how to do that, how it will be, which business to invest in or start yourself? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you three things you absolutely must buy before you move to Rwanda. Without these three things, I don't know if you will survive Rwanda, to be honest. To be transparent, I am selling one of these things, and if you're interested in it, check me at the end of this video. Welcome back, my wonderful people. Do you listen to podcasts? I have recently ventured into the world of audio by starting my own podcast, but I'm st struggling to find topics or guests to interview for this new medium. If you have any topic suggestions or guest suggestions, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification. Let's see if we can hit 25k now. And give this video a like, I will highly appreciate it as well. Alright, let's get started. In no particular order, the first thing you absolutely need to buy before you move to Rwanda is a vacation. Yes, can you actually buy a vacation? Well, you know what I mean. If you are seriously thinking about moving to Rwanda, I know money can be tight, time can be limited, or you just want to save up all your money and effort for that one big move. But I'm here to tell you, if your situation allows it, I would highly recommend for you to first visit Rwanda before you move to Rwanda, especially if you're an entrepreneur and you want to start a business here. I recommend vacation because it does three amazing things for you. First, you get to enjoy Rwanda without fully committing to it. You get to roam around the country, try new things, and just be curious. Remember, once you have set up your business and you have started working, you will be so busy, you would rarely find time to freely go out and about and discover Rwanda and enjoy all that it has to offer you. Secondly, you get lots of inspiration for your new business idea or how to improve your current business plan. And this in turn will save you lots of money in the long run. And lastly, you will get new connections by meeting new people. You see, here in Rwanda, everyone is very social and connected to each other because, well, we need each other. When you are in serious trouble, a good friend will most likely help you sooner than the government will. This happened to me as well. When my business was in serious trouble, like my equipment got confiscated and all, it was a, a new friend that I had met here that helped me to save my business. So connections are key. The second thing you need to buy are chill pills. You need to learn to relax. You have been waiting well over an hour for the food you ordered? Papa chill pill. Your business appointment is two hours late? Papa chill pill. You have been waiting on a bus for two and a half hours and there's no timetable. Papa chill pill. The quality of certain products that you are buying is lower and more expensive than when you came from. You know what I'm gonna say. Accessing simple government and bank services takes hours. Papa chill. Electricity just gets cut off. Papa chill pill. There's no water in the tap for days. Papa chill pill. The last and arguably the most important thing you need to buy before you move to Rwanda is a thick skin. If you're like me and you grew up in one of these rich western countries, you probably have soft skin. I did not know that my skin was soft until I moved to Rwanda. Rwandans have a way of bringing some of your deepest insecurities by doing two simple things in public. Staring and talking about you. Rwandans will stare you down everywhere you go from the supermarket to the doctor's office, whether you are in a car or in your own compound. They will stare at you mostly with a straight, unemotional face. If you stare back, you might win some of these stare battles, but you cannot win the war. Rondans also love to talk about you and everything that is different about you. From the clothes you are wearing to your weight. Such a curious bunch of people. They will make comments about your appearance without a filter in your presence. Even if you don't understand Chinyaranda, you will clearly know that they are talking about you. So what can you do about it? Well, buy a thicker skin. 
An example of someone who did not have thick skin before they came to Rwanda is my girlfriend. Back then I was not as wise as I am today so I did not prepare her very well to be honest. You guys know my girlfriend is kinda thick. Well, you know, Kevin Samuels will call her fat because she's not 120 pounds. But back then when my girlfriend came to visit me for the very first time, I would take her around the country to just show her all of Rwanda. My girl is Rwandan as well, so she's used to some aunties and uncles who make insensitive comments about her weight from a young age. But hearing small kids in the village calling her fat and making all kinds of nasty comments about her appearance was such a triggering event. And I really felt hopeless back then because I really could not do anything about it. Schatje? Wil je toch je vrouw komen vertellen? Kom dan. Ja. Dat maakt niet uit. Not everyone is born with a thick skin, however. That is why I'm selling my thick skin training consultancy. If you want to be mentally well prepared for a life here in Rwanda, book a session with me. We go through all kinds of cultural shocks, business ideas that are needed here, and just how to live a prosperous life here in Rwanda and more. Or become a hero Patreon and we can have monthly chats about any topic you want. Schatje, kom je? Okay, let's hear it from her own words. Oh, about the thingy. Yeah. Yes. Um, so to me, Theo did not prepare me well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's also because we are very different. But uh, the first time I came to Rwanda, uh, that was a real shock for me because I know all these aunties and uncles. I was used to them saying all this stuff to me. But coming to Rwanda, you get that multiplied by 10,000 because everyone around you is a Rwandan auntie or uncle mm -hmm. saying, making comments, rude comments about you. Without you even like you're just walking uh, down the street. So, um, yeah, that was just a shock for me. And I did not take it well the first time. And I really had to work on my own insecurities uh, in order to to be able to survive basically here. What, and what types of comments were they mostly making? Uh, it would be whatever. So it would be like... Oh, look at like one day I came out of the compound and I was wearing just just a, a normal like how do you call it a singlet maybe mm -hmm. yeah without like this shirt without arms so and sleeveless uh, shirt yeah and then and then um, these women who saw me they were like oh look at that girl she's like does she think she's so pretty she's just walking around without with with that shirt on and it was not nothing revealing no boob showing or um, so then the, like the next day I will wear a shirt without with sleeves and then the next day I will hear oh look at her she's so fat does she think she's pretty but this is things they say about you they look at you they don't when they look at me they don't think I'm Rwandan so they think I don't hear them mm -hmm. and then so they will be looking at me saying these things to each other but even if you don't know the language you know they're talking about you and they're saying mean stuff. They say mean stuff. Okay. Well, that's really what I also just said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess yeah. maybe the difference is with you is also that you understand the language. So you, mm -hmm. you pick up on these things um, much faster. But indeed, in my experience, you, you know when someone is talking about you, even if you don't uh, understand it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Do you have any other tips for people who want to come to Rwanda and who don't have very thick skin to begin with? Well, just the, 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 the good thing is to see this video and know about it. Mm -hmm. That was really what I needed. I didn't need you to like do all this crazy stuff. But before I came to Rwanda, I asked you, like, is there anything I should know? And you were like, no, you're good. And then so that's why I felt like ugh, I felt betrayed because you didn't tell me at least that. But I guess yeah. you have a different experience when you walk around. No, I don't. Yeah, they don't talk about me uh, in that way. In that way. Yeah, yeah. So the first thing is to know. And then the other thing is to actually work with yourself on these things, because um, if you're feeling better about yourself, anything anyone would say about you wouldn't 
um, touch you that hard or that, that much. Mm-hmm. And also, um, yeah, if like, for example, I shaved my head a few months ago and I was in Rwanda and I was bald and people would make comment about that. But because it was my decision that I made and I liked it, I liked the way that I was looking, they would comment about my hair and be shocked and even make mean or shocked comments. And I, w- I wouldn't care because I didn't care about the way my hair was looking. It was my own choice, basically. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for Thank your you. Co- contribution, guys. <laughs> I hope I, think, I get paid. Yes, you get paid <laughs> with uh, YouTube members and subscribers as well. Okay. Guys, if you have any other in-depth question about this kind of topic, you know, you know, you know who to holler at or just, you know, mm. put it in the comment section below and we'll, we'll discuss further. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. This was the video. Is there anything else you would want someone who wants to move to a country like Rwanda? Post it in the comment section below and maybe we can all learn from it. It would be awesome. Um, big shout out to my patrons again for supporting me and my YouTube members as always. Check me, check my podcast on uh, Spotify and Apple. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a like. And I would like to see you in the next video. Muramuchi.